Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is another combination tutorial between leatherworking and the paracord crafts. By using a center braid, you can add a nice decorative effect to a leather strap. This technique is also referred to as an applique and it is quite common in leatherworking but it can be done with paracord as well with good effect. I have learned this technique from Ron Edwards bushcraft books but I must admit that I do not agree with his classification. In my opinion this is a two stranded braid while he classifies it as a single strand braid. I can see the reasoning behind calling it a single strand braid because we only use a single strand but we are working with two ends which in my opinion makes it a two stranded braid. It doesn't really matter which classification you use, the result will be the same. As far as the supplies go, many of the tools used in this tutorial can be substituted with another tool that does an equally good job. Now we're going to need a leather strap, in my case it was 3 quarters of an inch wide and a foot long. You're going to need a piece of paracord, I used type 1 paracord, about 5 feet of it. You're also going to need a hole punch as well as a hammer in order to make the holes for the snap as well as for the center braid. You can substitute a hole punch for a drill and get a similar result. You're also going to need a snap as well as a snap setter. You can also use another type of a closing mechanism for your bracelet, for example a screw stud or anything that works for you. The next supply that I would recommend is two lacing needles but these are completely optional. You can braid the center braid without using lacing needles. Finally a knife or some scissors as well as a lighter will come in handy. These are the supplies that I used for my project and I'm going to give you additional tips and tricks during this video. With that said let's move on. The first thing that we should discuss is the leather. The leather is going to serve as the base for your bracelet and you need to select and prepare it accordingly. As far as the thickness of your leather goes, I would recommend at least 8 ounce leather. Thinner leathers are a bit too floppy and you need a thick strap so that it is rigid enough to serve as a bracelet. Now, as far as the width of the strap goes, it is a matter of preference. Here I have a half inch strap, a three quarter inch strap and an inch wide strap. And the width is going to determine a few aspects of your bracelet. The first aspect is the snap that you're going to use. For example, a half inch strap can work well with a line 20 snap. A half inch strap will work better with a line 24 snap. An inch wide strap can work either with a line 24 snap or two line 20 snaps. The width of the strap is also going to determine the cord that we're going to use for the center braid. The half inch strap will serve well with micro cord. The 3 quarter inch strap can work well either with type 1 paracord or even 550 paracord. And the larger inch wide strap can work with either 3. As far as the length of the strap goes, I think a foot length is great for your first bracelet. It gives you some room that if you make a mistake, you can still cut off the end. And continue with your project. With that said, let's move on to making the holes in our bracelet. So first the hole for our snap. The next step is punching in the holes for the center braid. The size of the holes will depend on the cord that you're using and I'm going to show you how to space them out properly. First what we're going to do is pick up our strap 
and mark the distance between the edge and our holes and do that on both sides. Then punch in your first two holes. I've now punched in two holes and they are a bit uneven but because braids are quite forgiving it shouldn't be a problem. The next step is to punch in more holes and the rule is that the distance between the holes here should be twice the distance between the holes here. So if this is 2x, this should be x. Meaning that this distance is half the distance of this. So punch in more holes and then we're going to start center braiding. Here you can see how I practice punching in my holes. I first mark them down and then punch them in. Once you get used to it, you won't need to mark down your holes anymore. After a while of punching holes, I'm able to do it freehand. This saves quite a bit of time and at this point I have made a sufficient length for my center braid. So we have a hole for the snap and then the holes for the center braid and after we have measured up the wrist we can also add a hole at the bottom. This will serve for the other part of the snap. You're going to need some type of cord to use for the lacing or the center braid and this can be, depending on the size of your hole, either micro cord, type 1 cord or regular paracord. I have one piece of paracord here that I'm going to need and for a 6 inch bracelet this is about 5 feet long. This is more than enough. You can remove the inner strand to flatten that cord out a bit. It's not absolutely needed, but useful. So grab a cord, prepare your strap and let's begin with the center braid. The center braid really doesn't require much in the way of tools, but if you have any of these around, they can be helpful. A fit can be used to push through the ends a bit easier, and the same can be done with a lacing needle attached to each of the ends. A more traditional way of lacing or doing a center braid is by using a two prong lacing needle. Again you will need two and these spread apart and have little teeth that hold on to your cord so it doesn't slip out. They are very handy and they can be found in leatherworking shops. I have my strap here as well as my cord with the lacing needles attached to each of the ends. I'm going to feed the two ends through the first two holes in the center braid. Make sure that both ends are of equal length when you pull them through. We're going to start with the right end and we're going to travel into the third hole on the left. Then through the second hole on the left and behind the cord that we have been using. Like this. Put this cord out of the way towards the left side. Then pick up your other end, so the left cord. And travel into the third hole on the right. Then through the second hole on the right. Into the next hole on the left, so the fourth one.
through the previous hole on the left, so the third one, which already has a chord in it, then behind the same chord that we have been using now. Place this end out of the way and pick up the other one that's behind. Travel into the next hole on the right side, so the fourth one. Then through the previous hole on the right side, which again has a chord in it already. Then into the next hole on the left. Through the previous hole on the left. And make sure you go behind the chord that we have been using. Now move your working end out of the way and pick up the other end again. Travel into the next hole on the right side. Then through the previous hole on the right side. It already has a chord in it. Then into the next hole on the left. Through the previous hole on the left. And remember to go under the same chord that we have been using. Move this chord out of the way. Pick up your next end. And again, into the next hole on the right. Through the previous hole on the right. Into the next hole on the left. Into the previous hole on the left. And under the chord that we have been using. You can probably already see the pattern. Once you have done your center braid, it is time to finish it. Here at the bottom I have one chord to each of the sides. I'm going to pick up the right one. I'm going to travel into the hole on the left. Then pick up my left chord and place it in the hole on the right. You can see that I more or less kept the over one under one sequence and we can now turn around the bracelet. Then take the left end and go under the two sections at the bottom. Then take the right end and go through the same two sections. Like this. This thickness here should help prevent the cords from slipping. And you can just cut them here and melt them. Or if you want to be careful, you can do an overhand knot on each of the cords. And just tighten it close to the cord. Like this. I don't like this because it's too bulky, but if you are having issues, this is a decent solution. I have finished my center braid now, 
and it looks quite nice at the back as well. So we have two straight lines, and at the bottom I used a cut and melt method which works quite well. Now what we need to do is punch in another hole on this side to add in the snap. Before we can set our snap we need to make sure that it will work with our leather nicely. To do that take two pieces of your snap, in my case the cap and the socket, and what we're going to do is place our cap, then our leather over it, then the socket. You need to make sure that in the center here you have enough metal so that you can punch it down and close your snap. If the leather is too thick, take a knife and thin it down a bit. For setting your snap you're going to need a few supplies. So here we have an anvil and a snap setter. We have four parts for our snap, a hammer, as well as a hard surface underneath this piece of paper. I'm using a marble slab and a hard surface is really important when setting a snap. Now we're going to start by placing one part, which is going to be the cap, into our anvil. Then we're going to place our leather strap, skin side down. And then we're going to use the socket on top. We're going to hit inside of our snap first a few times down and then in a circular motion just to space out the snap evenly. To set the other part of our snap, we're going to turn around the anvil. If you don't have this part, just do it on a hard surface. We're going to place our eyelet on top of the anvil, then place our strap over it, this time flash side down, and then place a stud over it. Again, head down a few times, then in a circular motion. With that we have set our snap. Once you have set your snap, you have a nice looking center braided bracelet on a leather strap base. Guys, Thank you for joining me in this tutorial, I hope it was handy and informative, thank you and see you next time.